Ooh, we got a touchy subject today. I'll tell you what, of all videos for me to post after being absent for about a week or so, which I do apologize for, I've been in the heat of battle, and uh, man, some of that would have made some good videos. And I actually did record some videos during my battle, but <clears throat> I don't know if I'm supposed to post them yet. <laughs> so we're going to leave those in the archives until the Holy Spirit releases those videos. Uh, but I have been recording some videos during my battle season. And uh, so now I'm walking through the bedroom this morning and my wife's sitting there listening to the Bible on our phone. And uh, so as she's listening to the Bible on the phone, I, I catch ear to it as he's reading. And he's actually reading over there in, uh, I believe it's, uh, hang on, let me look. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. About an occasion. And this occasion I've been talking about for years now. I've been saying this for years. Now I'm going to go ahead and get thrown under the bus right now because I'm with God. If you're throwing any kind of a party outside of a wedding, you're throwing an occasion. And if you're throwing occasions, anything outside of a wedding... Other than the Sabbath and our Father's high days. So it's our Sabbath, weekly Sabbath, the high days, and weddings. Those are the only kind of parties that us that have been adopted according to the adoption of the real Jesus Christ are allowed to attend. And if you're throwing any kind of other party or any kind of occasion then you're no better than, well, Satan. That's right. I'm fixing to show it to you right here in the scriptures. So let's get into this. First of all, I'd like you to pick up your device and pull up the Britannica or some type of dictionary to give you the meaning of the word occasion. Let me read you what I found. Jeremiah 2.24 occasion is employed both in Hebrew and in English forgive me whenever I pronounce this next word as a euphemism for time of conception of offspring that's a birthday oh yeah I hear a lot of people out there going boo right now yeah we're not supposed to be celebrating birthdays or when we got that there list over there in the first chapter of Matthew about the lineage of Jesus, their birth dates would have been probably given as well as he begat, he begat, he begat, he begat. As well as the birth date of John the Baptist. As well as the birth date of Jesus. Six months later. There's a big clue for you. Six months later. Now go, I challenge you. The birth date of John the Baptist is in the scriptures according to the Hebrew calendar. Shh. <laughs> That's where a lot of people get messed up. They apply these dates and times to the Gregorian calendar, which is the one we keep today. They don't investigate that Hebrew calendar to figure out days and times in the Bible. <laughs> and that's where the confusion comes from, see? You got to go investigate those days and times, which I got a video out there called Whose Time Is It Anyway? Go check that one out. That'll explain a lot to you. Whose Time Is It Anyway? That's a good video, praise God. It's a short one, too, so it don't require much of your time. So let's read this Jeremiah 2 and 24. All right, here we are. 2 and 24 says, A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure. In her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her mouth, they shall find her. Now, it gives us a couple other scriptures here. Let's go check them out. Jeremiah 14. So let's go over here to Jeremiah 14. Because we need more than one witness. This isn't just an easy understand. This is going to cause a little digging here. So we can get some understanding about what this occasion is. Okay. So Jeremiah 14. Where are we at here? Jeremiah 14 and verse 6 says. Where are we at verse 6? Right there it says. 
and the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Okay, now let's go over here to uh, Job 39.5. That's on back here a bit. See, Job is. There it was. Back there, back there, back there. Esther and Nehemiah. Let's go over here and find Job. That's not it. Hang on here. Job, there we go. What Job are we looking for here? Job 39 and 5. Job 39 and 5. Job 39 and 5. See, this is how I do it. I cross-reference all these scriptures, these little notes they give you, and you go in here and you dig and you find your answers. The Holy Spirit will give them to you. Who has sent out the wild ass free? <clears throat> or who has loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings? He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver, the rage of the mountains in his pastures, and he searcheth after every green thing. Well now, so I go to the dictionary and I look it up occasionally and it pulls up time of conception of offspring. That means a birth date, okay? I'm just getting into this for the first time as far as a Bible study, all right? Now I want to take you over here to the verse that, uh, that brought this to my attention through the Holy Spirit, of course, through my wife, okay? All right, so there's a verse. It's over there in Jeremiah 2. Jeremiah 2. Where are we at here? Jeremiah 2. I'm going to read that one more time. Because it says right here in the, in the dictionary, occasion. And it's spelled O-K-A-Z-H-U-N. Or in the English alphabet, O-C-C-A-S-I-O-N. Occasion. Okay, and Jeremiah 2.24 says, occasion is employed both in Hebrew and English, as an euphemism for a time of conception of offspring. So that's a birthday, okay? Now, let's get over here to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Let me write this down here because I'm making these little books for my children, see? That way they got all these studies and uh, and help, helping them traverse and understand these scriptures and rightfully divide them, okay? So 2 Corinthians, and i tell you what, I'm just going to pick it up at verse 1 because i got a good feeling about this whole chapter being about these occasions and the heart of a man, okay? All right, so here we go. Now I'm just warning you, this is the first time for me on this occasion thing in the scripture because I've always felt like if you wasn't praising your God... Or being obedient to his word, then you're wasting your time, money, and efforts. Uh, and all these little occasions are to glorify somebody, not God. Okay? All right, so let's start reading verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly? And indeed bear with me. For I am, a, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Think about what I just read. Over the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years, well, about 5,000 years and a few hundred. 5,000, what is it? I don't know. 5,000 something right now. 5,783, I believe, in the year. Hebrew year. Uh, he's subtle. They knew in the beginning, hey, you ain't celebrating no birthdays. There ain't no birthdays here. Otherwise, we'd have had Cain's birthday and Abel's birthday and Seth's birthday, right? Adam's birthday, Eve's birthday. We know Adam's birthday was like, what, day 
four or something like that. I don't know. Number four. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alrighty then, it's there toward the end, there, the, last, the sixth or seventh day there, Adam's built, or made, I guess, I don't know, uh, I'm not back there right now, and I have to go back and refresh my memory, but I guarantee you, Adam had a birthday that was not celebrated in these scriptures, <laughs> alright, verse 3 says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, there's another word to go look up, that means slow and and really patient and just it's just easing your way in really, really slow, you know, just to make sure you're not noticed. That's how this occasion's worked its way into society today as something good when it's something wicked and evil, just like Christmas, just like Halloween, just like Easter, just like all those other holidays and, and occasions and, and homemade feast days and, and uh, Jewish, uh, what are they called? Uh, Fables, that's right, all these fables. You gotta have an occasion, a celebration, a party. And who are you glorifying during that party? Are you glorifying God or some little kid? Train that little kid up in the way they should go. Hey, this occasion's good. Well, I'm fixing to show you who you're like if you're celebrating these occasions. Watch this, I'm gonna read this. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, what, there's another Jesus out there? You know, and tootin' there is. You better be careful. You know, you're not following that white Americanized Jesus. You better get behind the Hebrew Israelite Jesus. And brother with a little melanoma. <laughs> or what's it called? I don't know. Pygmy. <laughs> In your skin. Get you the darkness. Okay? So he says, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached... Or if you receive another spirit, which you ha which he have not received, or another gospel, which he have not accepted, you might well bear with him. And that's what I'm doing with you all right now. I'm bearing with you. I'm trying to show you. Stop the birthday parties. Stop all these little parties that you keep throwing that are called occasions. We're only allowed to attend weddings and God's high days and his weekly Sabbath day. You want to party? You want to celebrate something? Then have a potluck every Sabbath. That's right, party. You want to party? He blows up two feasts every year that are seven and eight days long. Yes, that's right. He wants us to party for seven and eight days with him. Not just one day, but he's got a whole week of partying he wants us to do with him. You just read his work. And he even tells you in his scripture back there, and I believe Deuteronomy, he says, you buy your tie up in your hand, turn it into money, and go buy whatever your heart lusts after and bring it to the party and party with me. That's right. God says that in his word. Nobody's teaching that, though. They want to go have a birthday party with Satan, right? Well, let's read it. That's what it says. Let me read it to you. All right, you got that other Jesus out there now. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest of apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Boy, I can relate to that one. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Keep in mind, this is not my knowledge I'm speaking of. Okay, I'm thoroughly furnished in this knowledge, not my own. Believe that. All right, seven, have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? See, he's not trying to glorify himself like we do at these birthday parties. Happy birthday to you. I mean, we sing to him, we glorify him, we build him up. We light little candles and build little cake altars in front of him. We got this little altar built and we shove this little altar right over in front of our little children and we go, Praise you, praise you, praise you. Now make a fictitious wish and blow out them candles. What'd we just do? We just started teaching our child fables. Fables and lies. We don't wish for nothing. The Bible says faith is the substance of things. What? Hoped. We hope for things. We don't make wishes. We make supplications and prayers. See, there's two different sets of rules here. You're either a child of the Most High, following the Most High's rules, His statutes, His laws, His commandments, right? 
his, uh, what are some other things called? Uh, statutes, commandments, ordinances. And his ordinances, see, ain't just a bunch of commandments. There's a bunch of ordinances and statutes too, like this occasion I'm teaching you about today. Go ahead and have you another birthday party with old Satan Claus. That's right. That's exactly what he wants you to do. He wants you to decorate the place all up like he used to be, really pretty. He wants it to get it smelling good and sounding good, just like he used to be. And then he wants to mock the creator, just like he does. Because he's doing it through lies. He wants you to feel good. He wants you to be happy in your flesh. That's right. Let's get to reading here. What's it say in the 8? It says, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. Now, let's see why. And when I was present with you I, and wanted, I was charged able to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. Are you supplying the saints' needs lately? Are you concerned with their ministry if you're tapped into it? Are you trying to help them out? Now, this ain't no infomercial for help. I'm not asking for help. I'm just asking, are you helping any of the brothers out that are out here trying to spread this gospel and this good word and this good news that are being persecuted because they're wheeling this sort of truth? Because that's what he just said. Them brothers, they made sure he had what he needed from Macedonia. All right. Uh, supplied in, 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 in all things. Okay, let's go back here. Verse 9. And when I was present with you and wanted a church of Macedonia, okay, blah, 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 blah. Macedonia supplied. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. He's not being burdensome to nobody. No, because he works with his hands. He's preaching this gospel, and he's got people supporting the ministry. See? People know this is a godly man. He's going out here to preach this gospel, this uncut version of the gospel, of this black Hebrew Israelite Jesus, the true one and only Christ, not this white Americanized fake that's causing havoc in the world right now. I'm not talking about none of my leaders. I'm not talking about none of the leaders on this planet. Hey, them's all God's anointed. I have nothing to say about them. All right, let's get on over here to verse 10. It says, As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Asia. Wherefore, because I love you not, because God knoweth, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory. See how he said that? They have these occasions so they can be glorified. Hey, I'm throwing a party this weekend, man. Come over. Hey, man, Robert's throwing a party. I hear he's got all the good stuff. He's got a live band. He's got it going on. These big old jugs and, and, of alcohol and, and you know, the, the, the best of the best of everything, man. Let's go party at Robert's house. Robert's being glorified now, not God. See, then when them feasts roll around or that Sabbath rolls around, oh, man, I made this pot for the Sabbath. Praise God. It's going to glorify him. Every time somebody takes a bite, they're going to think, praise the Lord. This is good. Now, what are we doing? We're glorifying God. See? We're not glorifying Joe Blow or it's old boy's birthday or it's, it's old boy's anniversary or, or, or it's Christmas or it's Easter or, or, we're, or we're doing something outside of what the Bible says we should be doing. Because when we do that, we open up ourselves to demonic activity. Now, if you want to open yourself up to some foul spirits, and you go sit at their table with them and, and watch how quick they come into your home. Watch how quick you find yourself toe-to-toe -to -toe with something you can't even touch. you got to learn all of a sudden how to fight in the spirit world, which is totally backwards to what this world teaches you. That's right, as you see already. All right, get on in here to verse 11. Oh, no, no, verse 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the region of Hei. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherewith they glory, they may be found even as we 
for such are false apostles. You got some preacher out there or some deacon out there or some brother in the church out there promoting birthday parties, promoting Christmas and Easter, all these fabulistic occasions. Well, listen to what he's compared to right now or she's compared to right now. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So see, Jesus says you're going to know them by their fruit. And a lot of you out there, man, what fruit's he talking about? He ain't talking about the obvious fruit. Well, that dude's a drunkard. Well, that dude's strung out on something. No, that's obvious, okay? He's talking about these people that are going to show up in the kingdom and say, but Lord, didn't I do all these wonderful things in your name? And he's going to look at this Christian and he's just going to say, I never knew you. Why did he not know him? Because he was about his father's business, Satan. He was busy throwing birthday parties. He was busy throwing uh, 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 anniversary parties. Any kind of party. Oh, look! The Saints won! Let's throw a party! Oh, this basketball team won! Let's throw a party! Hey, let's go out in this parking lot and have a tailgate party, man! These are occasions. Occasions to be gloried. To be glorified, to be talked about, to be talked up. Oh, man, he threw a good party. Did you see that? What about the Bible? What about the Bible? What does it say? Who was glorified at the wedding at Jesus' first miracle? That's right. The governor of the wedding was glorified. Why was he glorified? Because it was a wedding. And all of a sudden, he presents the best wine Israel has ever tasted because of Jesus. His mother said, look, they're out of wine. And I would have been like, well, aren't they drunk enough? But Jesus was not. He was obedient to his mother. That's right. She said, you make him some wine. He said, go grab him pots. Fill him up with water and set him over there and draw some out. And buddy, when he did that, that governor was so impressed. And he was glorified at that moment. See what I'm saying? Jesus was glorified at that moment. Who brought this wine forth? Well, the servants knew. You think they didn't talk? Jesus is constantly running through these scriptures saying, shh, don't tell nobody what I did for you. You go full glorify God and tell the people what God did for you. God did this for me. Glorify God, the Father, through our King and our Savior, and our warrior Jesus. That's right. Let's get back to this read. These occasions. I'm telling you, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You better get out of it. You better start retraining those children. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you're seven this year. That's about all you're going to get. Happy born day. Now let's get back to work. See, that's how that's supposed to work. Not, oh, we're throwing a big party. I done went and bought all this stuff. I got the house all decorated. I got all these balloons everywhere. I got this big thing sitting out across the street. I'm, I'm just doing this whole birthday thing, man. Are you glorifying God or yourself? or your children, or a family member, or a close friend. Who are you glorifying here? Now let's, let's see where he compares these people that do these things to the evil one. Right? He says, for such are false prof apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So all these people that are doing these occasions... They're just transforming themselves into Christians, not Israelites. Okay? There's a promise made to a certain family back in the scriptures, okay? That family is going to be in the new kingdom. And anyone that joins themselves to that family becomes an Israelite. You will enter in through one of the gates in the new Jerusalem when the Father brings it down to dwell with mankind. You're going to enter into one of them gates. Underneath or above each one of them gates is the name of his Israelite man, one of the sons of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. A third son, accountable son, blessed son from Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. That was a really neat parallel back there we just learned here not too long ago that uh, who was it? Joseph? Who was it? Oh, I forget. The boy that was sold into slavery uh, was sold to his great uncles 
uh, children, his cousins, the Ishmaelites. That was a really cool find when the Lord revealed that to us. I was like, oh, they kept him in the family until they sold him to Egypt. <laughs> Isn't that something? All right, 2 Corinthians 11, 1. And I'm marking this down because, like I said, I'm just putting this lesson together right now, straight off the cuff. The Holy Spirit just grabbed me and set me down and said, do this. So here we are. All right, he said, even Satan is transformed into an angel of light, just like these people that are throwing these parties. Outside of the word of God. You want to find out what God wants you to celebrate? Then you go back there and you read Leviticus 11. And he starts out with his weekly Sabbath. And then he talks about his feast days. And then if you flip over into the New Testament, you see him still celebrating those high days and that Sabbath. But then you see where they also go to weddings. We're allowed to celebrate at a wedding and party at a wedding. So weddings, Sabbaths, and Feast dates of the Lord. That's when we're supposed to be celebrating. Any other time puts us in the same box with the enemy. Satan. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how much money you spent. I don't care how good it smells. I don't care who's coming to the party. It's an occasion and it's wicked. You ain't mad at me right now. You are not mad at me right now. You're mad at this word. The God that I serve. Now, get over it. Get over it or get under it, man. Let's finish this read. Yeah, he says, if you're going to do those occasions, let me read that again just so you can get it in your spirit. He says, he says right here. Well, hang on, I done flipped the page. Hold up, right here. He says, for such, he says, for such, for such who? He says, but, he says, uh, I may cut off an occasion from them which desire an occasion. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Who do we glory in? God. He said, these people need to stop doing this and they need to glory like we do. Who do we glorify? We glorify God. This brother is telling him, look, we glorify God. We don't glorify ourselves. We ain't out here having parties and birthday parties and, and all these other kind of parties that we could have. We're not doing that. See? He says, glory as we do. Well, how does he glory? Well, let me just show you. I'm just going to take you back here and show you real quick. Go on back here to Leviticus 23. And what's it say? And it says it right here. Six days, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now, there's your weekly Sabbath. Now, check this out. We got some yearly feast dates that roll around. Yeah, that's right. Just like the world's holidays. That's right. But these are founded on the Father God. They are blessed and sanctified. You, 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 you're not sitting at the table of demons. You're sitting at a table full of angels and the Holy Spirit. He says it right here. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. And then he goes on in and tells you about this, this, this Passover. And in this Passover, if you study out that Passover, you're going to learn so much about Jesus. You're going to learn so much about the Father God if you just read these feasts and start keeping them and applying them to your life. Because you're not going to be able to keep them the way they did back then. But you can memorialize them as a lesson in your life in a day in which the Lord has sanctified and set apart for you to learn and be intimate with Him instead of being intimate with the world. You know what I mean? You want to be intimate with the world or you want to be intimate with God and get close to God and be his child. See what I'm saying? You're not going to be perfect. Should we know? But he is and he will be perfect through you if you allow him to. And see, that's where I've been having trouble and that's why I need so much prayer. I've been making me some lessons here. I just haven't been posting them. The Lord hasn't released them lessons from me yet, but they're in here. <laughs> All right, so he says, look here. Those false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Wow. And there's a couple of scriptures here. Acts 15, 24 and Romans 16, 18. And then the next verse says, even the Satan uh, transformed himself into an angel of light. And you can see that there over in Galatians 1, 8. It says, therefore, is it no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works? Well, let me unpack that verse for you real quick. Therefore, is it no great thing that his ministers... You mean if I throw a birthday party, I'm a minister of Satan? That's what this Bible just said. 
You mean if I throw uh, uh, an anniversary party or some kind of a party for a friend? Anything that doesn't glorify God. If I just throw a party because I just want to throw a party for a football team, a basketball team, a baseball team, or just a friend or whatever, I'm a servant of Satan? Well, let me read it to you. What's the Bible say? It ain't me you're mad at right now. What's the Bible say? The Bible says this. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. We glory in God. Why aren't you? It's time to come out of her, my people. It's time to come out of her. He says in that very next verse, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. So you fake Christian. You're fake. And I can read about you in the scriptures because you're going to look at the King Jesus and you go, hey, wait a minute. I did a lot of wonderful things in your name. Well, didn't he say over Matthew 23 and Matthew 24, didn't he say many will come in my name saying I am the Christ, but will deceive many? Now, if you're running around out there saying, hey, it's okay to have birthday parties. Hey, it's okay to celebrate Christmas and Easter and, and anything else you want to celebrate that has nothing to do with the scriptures of God. How are you being intimate with Jesus? How are you being intimate with God if you're not celebrating His Word and His Word only? How can you sit at God's table and Satan's table at the same time? Come out of her, my people. That's what His Word says. It's time to come out and be segregated and separated from the ways of this world and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's time. He's separating the sheep from the goat right now. The wheat from the tares right now. They're being separated right now. You make your stand. It's time to repent and stand up for what is right. What are we thinking? What are we doing? I've spent the last month fighting tooth and nail with these spirits I can't even see. They've been running rampant around this place. and It's like all I can do. The Holy Spirit just keeps saying love. 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 And my flesh keeps saying, <laughs> figure that one out. You're only going to figure it out through Jesus 4.13, Philippians 4.13. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. That's right. You see, see him picking me back up now? I'm shooting a video this morning, ain't I? Well, evidently, we're moving in the right direction now, praise God. Thank you, Father God, for a repentful heart. Thank you, Father God, for sending a Savior that I definitely need. Thank you, Father God, for your Son. Thank you for His mercy and His blood. Thank you for His love and His blessings and His judgments. Thank you for His uh, ordinances and statutes and commandments. Thank you, Father God. I love them all. I'm the one that keeps getting in the way, not you. That's right. That's how we got to be feeling. Now, let's get this done here. He says... Verse 16, I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. You got somebody out there boasting about themselves? There's a big red flag. There's some fruit. You're a fruit inspector. I don't care what they say. Bible says so. You're a character inspector, a fruit inspector. So if you got someone out there preaching birthdays, then you know they're of Satan. If you got somebody out there preaching these holy days that the world likes to uh, uh, celebrate and not the holy days, then you know they're of Satan. They got a satanic spirit with an agenda working through these people. Now, am I calling these people Satan? No. The principalities. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities in high places. How long have they been celebrating birthdays? I'd say that's a high place, wouldn't you? I'd say the whole world does it, don't you? Well, don't this Bible say, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind? What are we doing right now? We are renewing our mind in truth to know that these birthdays, these anniversaries, and anything else you can come up with outside of God is wickedness. That's what we've been learning during this lesson for the last, what, 34 minutes. Now let me get it finished up here. 
Verse 17, that which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in the confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also, for you suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. You, for you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man do devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, how be it wheresoever any is bold. I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrew? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? Question mark. I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant in stripes, above measure in prisons, more frequent in depths often of the Jews five times Received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the depth. Depths, talk about the ocean. A night and a day. Can you imagine being in the ocean floating around for a whole night? I can't even imagine that. I would My heart would have probably failed me. In journeyings, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. I'm sure this false brethren is going to be watching this video too because the wheat and the tares come up together, right? That's what I'm talking about right now. Everything, everyone's being divided and separated in their hearts and in their minds. Those of you out there right now scoffing at me and saying, Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with birthdays. Well, you're being separated with the enemy, Satan. And those of you out there going, Wow, I always had a feeling about this. I knew there was something about these occasions that didn't glorify God, that wasn't good. I shouldn't be a part of it. You're being separated as the sheep unto the king for his service. Now it's time to come out of here, people. It's time to come out of here. You get your sword out and you start reading. You start asking God to open up your eyes and your heart and your mind. And he will. He will. He will. Verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more labor. Okay, we don't read all that. Stripes, stone, shipwreck, perils. Now, why did he go through all of that? Because he had not a very popular message. He's rolling up into a heathen nation or village and saying, Hey, stop celebrating your birthdays. Oh, hey, stop having those parties you've been having that your parents taught you about. They're actually pagan and wicked. That's why people didn't like him. He said, Hey, celebrate God only. That's not a very popular message among the heathen. They're not even Israel. I guess they wouldn't be Israel anymore if they're not of the seed of Abraham, right? There's a little food for thought for you well taught. All right? Let's see what we got here. In weariness and painfulness, watching off. Okay, yeah, he did all that, man. He went through a lot of stuff. Besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. See there? He's got a prayer list. And he's praying for all these people. He's sending letters out to all these people to say, hey, look, stay away from these occasions. Stay away from these, uh, these, uh, the, uh, 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 these false, uh, what are they called? Uh, fables. Stay away from these fables. Stay away from these occasions. He says, watch your mouth. Stop fornicating. Stop drinking blood. Stop having all these pagan rituals and holidays. And, and uh, stop all these little idols. Get them out of your house. I mean, all these instructions were to people just like us, Gentiles, heathens. Okay? Now we're adopted. Now we're Israeli. That's right. Now we're Israelite. We are of the seed of Abraham now. And nothing can change that. Because Jesus is not a liar. He's the author and he's the finisher of our faith if we allow him to be. And that's if we're serving the right Jesus. 
that Hebrew Israelite. Just a little food for thought there, buddy. All right. All right, let's see here. So, yeah, I mean, just let me back up here. The whole point of this lesson, lesson was called occasion. I'm going to read that again. Okay? This is birthdays and holidays he's talking about that are not in the instructions that God gave us. There's a lot of Jewish fables out there, or I should say uh, Edomite fables out there, because <laughs> a lot of folks out there think that they're Jews, but they are not, and they'll be dealt with. Uh, that's a different lesson for a different day, though. So check it out. Here's what this lesson was all about right here. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knows. That's right. God knows who lo really, truly loves in their heart and who's faking it. Right? You've heard that old saying, fake it till you make it? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. If you're faking anything, then you're a liar. You better watch what's coming out of your mouth. That's right, I used to say it too. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. And one day the Lord said, really? Really? Lie about it till you make it? Why not practice and rehearse truth and righteousness until you make it? See the difference? We gotta watch. We gotta pay attention. And we gotta watch, okay? Now this is what the lesson was all about, occasion. He says it right here, verse 12, 11. 2 Corinthians eleven twelve says, but what I do that I will do. And what's he talking about right there? He says, what I do, that I will do. And what's he do? You can read in the New Testament where he says, by all means, I've got to get back to Jerusalem. Why? For Pentecost. He's got to be there for Passover, Pentecost, unleavened bread. That's right, trumpets, atonement. Tabernacles is a good one too. They're all good. You know, the Bible says that three times a year that all the males on this rock appear before God, whether you know it, like it or not, you do. That's what I'm saying. You got to get back here and you got to read about God's high days, his feast days, and find out what his instructions are. Otherwise, you're going to be like this. My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Don't perish from a lack of knowledge. Don't be standing there in front of your judge, your creator, and your maker saying, but Lord, I did many things in your name. And he looks at us and says, one of two things. Come in, good and faithful servant, for keeping my high days, my feast days, preaching the dietary law, preaching every and anything that the real Hebrew Israelite, my son, kept, and his apostles kept, and anybody that loved my law and meditated on it day and night and has a testimony of my son, come on in here, good and faithful servant. <clears throat> Then people running out there spreading lies, setting up parties, these occasions to glorify anything but God. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Why did he never know this person? Well, let me read it to you. He says right here, for such are false apostles. Deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. You all have a good day and read your Bibles.